If you go to the Urbana website, urbana.org, under the resources pull down menu you will find the controlled hand forging lessons. If you look at controlled hand forging lesson number 14, bending, you'll see forging a 90 degree bend. The lesson covers forging the 90 degree bend at the anvil. The purpose of my video is to augment that lesson by looking at other methods such as forging it at the vise or forging it at the vise and anvil combined. Here you can see I've got my centre punch mark away from the anvil and I've made a second mark with chalk so I can just line up those three lines when I come out of the fire I don't have to try and hunt for that centre punch mark. That helps me go to work a little quicker. The pitfalls of dealing with an upset corner are covered in the spring issue of the Hammers Blow. I'm going to bend that around. It's not quite 90 degrees. And you can see I have sufficient heat to be able to go to work. But if I go to work now, I run the risk of galling that inside corner. So I'm just going to move that out a little bit, only by half an inch. Now I can take end of that bar to protect the bend from closing. and that should do. I'm going to keep the corner out away from the edge of the anvil, the inside corner away from the edge of the anvil. Take care of the end of the bar, stop the bend from closing, match the hammer, light rapid blows, And I'm going to stop there. I still have plenty of heat, so I'm going to turn this around and work the other side. Again, not quite up to the mark. I still have sufficient heat to be able to work. And now I'm going to go back to the fire. Let's have a look at what we've done so far. There's my centre punch mark. There's my centre punch mark. And there is one flat and there is the other flat.
So here's the result of our second heat. You can see that the two flats are coming very close together. This side I think is finished. This side needs a little more work. I'm going to go to the uh, anvil now and dress some of this excess material and try and force that out to the outside of the corner to fill in that gap. So here we are, the end of our third heat I think it is. Now we can either choose to work here at the anvil or we can go back to the vise. I'm going to go back to the vise. This is me utilising the last of the heat from dressing the corner at the anvil. I'm just going to work up this side. See where we're at. So you can see the center punch mark. I have to close those gaps just a little further, but now I have an excess of material on the outside of the bend due to the upsetting process. So what I think I'm going to do is stop working at the vise, go to the anvil again next time round, dress this upsetting um, or the swelling, and then work the excess up into the corner at the anvil. Here's the result of working at the anvil. I took the pooch of material that was here, pushed it into the corner, and at the same time worked the corner up a little bit. I'm hoping you can see that the center punch mark is in line with the diagonal from the inside to the outside of the corner, and that I've managed to retain parent stock thickness. You'll also note, I hope, that the bar or the corner is open from 90 degrees. Don't forget that's leading into a scroll. I'm not so worried about this because it's going to get drawn down. This will be my inside of my two square corner bends. There's my second square corner and then the rest of that will be drawn down. Look at the second corner. Again I have a chalk mark. There's my center punch mark. So now I can just bend that. Again, not to close it fully. Just continue the bend, there we go. So our centre punch mark is in the middle of the bend. You'll notice that my bend here opens up due to inertia. Typically I would forge along the anvil and have a block in the hardy hole, but I can't get my camera angle right. Um, so I'm having to work here at the step and the bounce is causing this bend to open up. Not a big deal.
here's the result of our two upset corners. You'll notice I hope that the sense punch marks are in the middle of the corner. The two end pieces are somewhat parallel and the middle bar is at an angle meaning that these bends, these upset bends are open from 90 degrees which will allow us to scroll these as per the drawing without putting undue pressure on the stress riser points. Here's my test piece for my two upset square corners and if I draw my lines across the diagonals here and then measure those I can see I'm at 2 and 1 16th of an inch between my centre punch marks. So I lost a 16th of an inch between the two centre punch marks as a result of doing this forging. So what I'm going to do is increase the gap between those centre punch marks by that 16th. So I'm going to go from 2 and 1 8th to 2 and 3 16th to compensate for that loss. Once you've completed the two upset square corners, you're going to put a slight taper on the bar here and scarf the end ready to do the forge weld. You can see I hope from the bottom of the datum here that we had at the bottom of the leaf out to my corner here, my far corner, I have at the moment ten and a half inches. So I need to extend this whole taper leaf assembly when welded by another one and a quarter inches. So don't spend a lot of time with the taper here, don't overly thin that. Get the weld first, then we'll concentrate on uh, drawing the taper. The reason for doing the taper now is if you do it to later, that delicate leaf is going to be in the fire more than it has to be.